Glimpses of the opening, excruciatingly hot conditions, temperatures close to 40 degrees, ambient temperature. There's your championship, pretty easy to fourth race in a row. Can he make it back to back wins? No French rider has done that ever in the Premier class. Portugal, best ever qualifying result. He's not got far to travel home tonight. Can MotoGP, who can keep calm in the heat, who can keep cool in the heat, who can keep collected in the heat? Well, both to ref Grand Prix so far this year, but he's always said it's about consistency. That came to the fore last week, 2017. They're still winless here, of course, since 2006. Loris Caparossi, not too much money, actually. Go was going to tuck the front then on the uh, warm-up lap into the final corner. He's trying to get his money in five laps. So, who's going to nail the start? Who's got the best hole shot device in both the GP? Is it Yellow? Who will amaze us in Andalusia? The green flag is waving, 25 laps. Of oh, he got that one absolutely nailed. He's flying up the hill. Rossi also with a decent start. And Vinales, it's going to be a Yamaha. KTM check three bikes. The Yamaha hole shot device working perfectly yet again. It's Miguel on Vinales trying to stretch away from the oh, back. Oh, was involved as well. So it's Quattro fourth place to a great start from Miller. Then it's Nakagami, Banyaya, and Morbidelli. Paul Espargaro, well wide at two. Not had a Yamaha 1 2 3 in GP since Philip Island in 2014. It's early doors. All right, there are the two Pramet Takati riders, Miller, Banyaya, who's now gone through on Taka Nakagami. What happened at the. So that's compromised their race. Last weekend, there was an early drama for Binder when he looked so good, he ran one. Maverick Vinales is looking good here. He's lining up a move, surely, into the final turn. Here he comes. He can't drop behind the Ducati of Jack Miller. That would have been a nightmare. He hasn't, luckily. Vinales does like Italian. That doctor up in the second. You've got the apprentice and the master in first and second here, then. It's likewise. Nine places made on that opening lap from Alex Marquez from the very back of the grid. Yeah, saw Paul Espargaro. This corner, then. Miguel Oliveira did not get a good start. Look, he's been swallowed up on that run into the first corner. Rapid Big impact, wasn't it? Oliveira landing right. Oh, Ooh. dear. And he got hit by him as well, just for good measure. Oh, well, Binder. Ouch, ouch, ouch. The incident under investigation. We send our best to uh, Miguel. Who's took uh, a devices. It was a clean start for everybody. No jump start. Taka Nakagami. Go back now. At the moment, swarming all over his Pramat the Caddy teammate, Jack Miller's rear tyre. In fact, at the moment, it looks like Bagnaia has got the corner and he's gone wide. Yeah, he's done oh, a he's down. And he's up again. What a save by Pekka Bagnaia. Mark what Marquez. a save. Mark Frustrated and impatient there because he could see the Yamahas getting away. He looked quicker than Miller and he tried to start. Now, Quattararo is bolting here. Rossi hasn't got the pace of the Frenchman and at the moment, Vinales can't find a way. Cannot get stuck behind Rossi for too long, otherwise, Quattararo is going to check out. Quick check on Dovi. He's in the race of 38280 yeah. from Quattararo. He on board with them. Vinales. Quattararo mullered the two Yamahas behind him. Wait, if he does, it's all going to be about a test of his concentration in these conditions. Herve Poncharal said, oh, did they, unfortunately? They weren't jangling for that long because Oliveira taken out at the first corner. Cruel for him. Having Jack Miller's closing in on the pair of them. They do not want that Ducati in front of them here in Jerez. The Pramac. Yep, he is. to the home straight here. Oh, oh and Rossi in a bit wide from Rossi. It's been a 1.5 second deficit on Quattararo. He's gone. Quattararo, a 38-119 slap. Quattararo was faster than Rossi. Yeah, and you can see how impatient Vinales is now to try and get through this year to uh, Maverick Vinales in Jerez. He ran wide last weekend to surrender the lead to Quattararo. Costly mistake for Maverick Vinales. Is he going to find a way up the inside of Rossi into turn six? No, he's not close enough. Yeah, notoriously always been a demon on the brakes, hasn't he, Valentino? Further back then, it's Miller Bansting for Maverick Vinales as he sees Fabio Quattararo stretching away. Again, Quattararo in sector three. He's three tenths quicker in sector three than Rossi and Vinales. Vinales has got to get through. Yeah. Here he comes, up the inside. Can he get it stopped this time? He can or outbreak Valentino Rossi. He can't find... All tank still quite full. It's been an issue in the past. Rossi through, not to have Jack Miller sweep through as well. Now is Davizioso picking his way through. Vinales having another pop at Rossi and it went slightly wrong because he's just lost a bit because he's so superior in terms of his rhythm. Again, that last lap, six tenths quicker than in a complete class of his own. Got to give a shout out to Alex Rins at the moment. He's one place ahead of Cal Crutchlow. Some leathers on today, testament to their willpower and determination. Cal Crutchlow was saying that he was from his left scaphoid. Wow. Well, have at the moment there. 
their leading rider is Podis Bargaro. He's still in 12th. He can't get through on his brother Aleix right now. Do you know when you fall and then manage your pace? This is just a typical Jorge Lorenzo. Yeah. Another 38.4 for him. Seven tenths quicker than Rossi. They've got nothing for him. He's going to be 3 7. And he's got the two Pramit Ducatis ganging up behind him as well. Taka Nakagami hanging in there as well inside the top six. Thomas Fargo for qualifying in 12th because his pace is just as good as the guys in the podium fight. And Brad Binder. Lower than Fabio Quattararo. Oh, that's incredible. So, and once uh, again, a tale of what might have been with Miller. Miller really wide. And Nia almost going through there on it. Just was able to pull it back. Close to seriously showing Vignal as a front tyre. <laughs> You've got to give Rossi credit here, Matt. I mean... Um, 41, fit as a fiddle, isn't he? I mean, these are testing conditions for Valentino Rossi. Well, he's doing an awesome job at the moment in second place. Top left of the picture, Fabio Quattararo had a little bit of a moment. Being 138.793, and there was a small mistake on that lap. He's just there at the top of your picture, trying to hunt down. Oh, take three, are having a disaster. Third crash of the weekend for Eka, looking a bit ugly. Last corner, just tipping off the side. Alex Rins is right, still doing 39. Low. They're both doing 139. Oh, not under immediate pressure here in second place. Maverick Vignal is there on this lap to go through on Valentino and not making it stick. Look how costly it's become. Going as Davide Brivio alluded to. As we said as well, this will sting for Vinales, particularly if he drops into Taka Nakagami's Honda. Will probably be close enough to attack the Japanese man into the final quarter. We're looking back. Lovely that was. There wasn't a lot of room there, but he really forced the issue. There was nothing that the guy could do. He can see more. here. He's looking good. He's looking good. I mean, fair play. This is no fluke than Vinales. So at this phase of the race, a long, long way to go. We've still got 18 laps. Got Vinales' measure. If, if Rossi finishes on the podium, age 41, in conditions like this, it would be one of his greatest. Nothing to do with the mechanical. So, Ducati's then trying to find a way to know Rossi has got a good gap now. Almost half a second on Maverick. And if Maverick fought to not finish on the podium, given his speed all weekend, that would be a disaster. That would be a disaster. I don't care if he's top six, top That mistake at the start of the race, he's gone through on Bradley Smith. That puts him up into 18th place as he hunts down. Constantine Rob on the brakes into that tight first quarter. I remember in 2006, when Tony Elias clobbered. Fabio Quattararo, 3.6 seconds clear of Valentino Rossi, who's now... Jack will be frustrated if Pecco does that. You can just see Jack at the moment is just trying to conserve himself on the sight of the Yamaha. I just wonder as well whether these guys in that pack, how their front tyres are holding around. Last weekend, unfortunately he's out. Oh, here, here comes, comes Jack. Miller up the inside. Miller. Up. So Miller, in an attempt to go up into a podium position, has now dropped back to fifth. Pushed so hard on that front end to make up the lack of acceleration on that Aprilia. He's so on the limit. He's been bitten again. No further action taken after the reviewing of the incident. That's, the, that's it's just a typical it's, cut first. It's just behind Jack Miller there. He's got past Nakagami and really closed on these guys. It's the problem he's got, of course, is he's got two Ducatis in front of him, which are notoriously yeah. difficult to pass. But Ducatis, his tyre pressure on the front and the temperature went through the roof. And it became a bit of a handful. She's behind the Duke was struggling. And, of course, you, you've got to take so many risks to get by the Ducati. It's so toughest motorcycle to overtake him by the GP Look right at the now. speed difference. Look at the speed difference there of the Ducati and the Yamaha. Here goes Peko Bagnaia. He's in third. Can he hold on to it? He can. Smartless by Bagnaia. He's just picking up the pieces of everybody else. And so Peko Bagnaia, he's just keeping cool, keeping his head down, riding smart, not making mistakes, being Rossi, who himself is six tenths clear of his protege, Peko Bagnaia. 50 points coming the way potentially for Fabio Quattararo. Mark Marquez will have zero. Straight we go. 14 laps left of this race. There's Jack Miller now trying to have a look up the inside of Maverick. He's having a bit of a nightmare here. And now it comes Morbidelli up the inside as well. Maverick Vignal. What the Yamaha factory were expecting at all. They thought he was going to be going with 14 laps left of this race. There's Jack Miller trying to have a look up the inside of Maverick. He's having a bit of a nightmare here, and now it comes Morbidelli up the inside as well. Maverick Vignal. Not what the Yamaha factory were expecting at all. They thought he was going to be going with Fabio Quattararo in a...
social distancing regulations I mean you're supposed to be two metres away from everybody in the paddock I think you're going to need to give Mavic Vignard the off right now well how upbeat did he look before the race bouncing away in his seat in the pit box listening to his tune they are staring down the barrel of yet another dominant victory here in Jerez we said oh someone's gone down that's Miller. Miller oh Jack Miller has gone yeah, down and out just see of that the race flash at the bottom of your screen was that somebody else down as well I think that's just the onboard that's noise the, of yeah. the marshals pick turn nine almost a little bit too hot. Pecco Bagnaia, you know, he's got a very boss just up ahead of him. Yeah, and he looks like he's got the better pace, doesn't he, Pecco Bagnaia? He said all throughout the weekend, his own argument, but... And who would have thought this? As Quattararo leads, Valentino Rossi, what we feared, a real race of attrition. Oh, Rossi's wide. Yeah, the guys are hitting massive tyre trouble already here. Fourth out, Danilo Petrucci. Pecco Bagnaia then in second place. We've got Trap. This is hard work for everyone right now. Petrucci, that's the fifth round boxing clever like he always does. Andrea De Vizioso ghosting towards the top six. Dobby now in that. We know that De Vizioso is a master at time management. Is there still an outside? But who knows? Anything in this race could happen as yet. Pecco Bagnaia is now streaking away from Valentino first podium. Petronas Yamaha, of course, they've had their win. They've never had both men on the podium. Everything you are. It's looking like Valentino Rossi is having problems stressing that rear tyre like he always does. Pretty quickly to Franco Bordet. Look how quickly Bagnaia has dropped him. Matt, coming out of uh, struggling there as well, turn it, six, he just cannot get the drive at all. It's that age-old problem, isn't it, for Rossi at this stage of races. Franco Morbidelli is getting a good look at the boss here. Thought he might be going for it at turn number nine. What has happened? See, Andrea De Vizioso is really paying the price for a woeful qualifying and struggling to as Fabio Quattararo, your race leader. Dovi's got some good rhythm. Tihu is in a really fast... So both Nier and Dovi might make some forward movement. You know what, as well? Rins and Crutchlow They're doing are still doing... I, I just Absolutely can't, I can't incredible. process their bravery. I mean, it's balmy, really, what they're... Seconds clear for Fabio Quattararo. It's going to feel like a long race. Oh, it gets worse for KTM. Bindu's turning to jelly right now. You finish this race, you're in the point stay for Brad Binder. That's a nasty, nasty high side. Oh, and he, he gets, gets a wallop as well. as well from that RCC or so, haven't we, at the arrest circuit. You know Thankfully, what? he's on his feet. You know that what? Was a big one. We're on the absolute limit. These bikes and riders are going. This is going to feel like the longest 12 laps of these guys. It feels like we've been out here for 12 hours already. Valentino Rossi's responded a bit. Yeah. Despite the podium does for you for the first time in about 18 months. Well, it would be an incredible podium for Valentino. I mean, there's some brilliant rides. There's Takanaka Gami as well. Sixth place here. Near just behind him. There is Doffy. Look, guy right now. He's just set his personal best lap of the race on lap 14. On probably at best 60% fit. He's doing personal best laps of a 39.4 on lap. Was he, I mean, obviously, he was conserving energy this morning, but he was five seconds off the pace. I thought, he's going to quit. He's going to withdraw the shift. still a long way to go here, though, Matt. This is still a long way to go. Oh, there's Polis Barker, the only KTM rider left. Last man standing for the Austrian boys. Oh, so early on and made that mistake. Lost out on a lot of places, did Paul. Riders in this race left, 11 laps to go, make that 10 across the line. Quite a lonely test of his focus and concentration. Last week he said the last 10 laps were the longest of his life. Well, I wonder how these 10 laps... Right again by this young man, Alex Marquez. Yeah, I agree with that. On the Repsol Honda, yes, there's been a few crashes, a few falls. The young Marquez. Okay, Morbidelli, the fastest rider. You know, Rossi, you can see in that shot, this is the battle for third place. Pecco Bagnaia further up the road in second. That's why we saw him drop down to seventh. So let's just see. They've been working a lot on front tyre durability. A plan that's worked well for the Pramac like the Catty man. He looks great so far. But well, we see that shot. I'm slightly less exotic and high tech up all day. Simon, we just saw a, a real bruising, nasty crash for Brad Binney. Look like he lost. We get to see it again. Oh, it's pretty, pretty horrible for Brad. But... Sorry, Simon, Simon, Simon. Last weekend, Valentino Rossi out of the Spanish Grand Prix with a technical oh, problem. What's he doing? Get off the circuit, Franco. Far back, major, major concern for the Awata factory. Rossi out with a technical last weekend. Franco.
for old Franco. Um, if I'll get down to Yamaha and ask them uh, what they think, which again, Binder, um, what are we going to see here? Let's, let's watch this first. Where Rossi's went, no more chances of a podium gone. By the way, Cal Crutchlow's just entered pit lane, I would imagine, to not happen. Cal Crutchlow's the ultimate warrior, not a guy who pulls in. Guys, that, uh, that, that sound shuts down. Uh, they don't know. Uh, basically, they told me it happens uh, whether it's an electronic can do it if the engine has a problem. It does a big shutdown as well. Again, safety, you know, so... some serious burning at midnight oil in Iwatra over the next few days. Rossi out with a technical stage with overheating that rear tyre, running out of rear grip here, Rossi and now. Vinales is trying to strike in two races in a row. Remember Rossi had that big explosion when he was doing so well in Mugello. Yamaha right now are going through engines like confetti at a wedding. And that will be a concern with the engine and the cake out some performance on their engines to make them more reliable or with something that can be rectified pieces like they have done over this last week in these brutal conditions in Jerez. This will be heartbreak for seven laps to go now. Quattro crosses the line. You know, Jove Poncheras race has been so far and there might yet be a few more cool moments for one or two riders as yet. The guy's core temperature will be off the scale. They'll be gasping for breath, just inhaling red hot air off to turn five. He's not quite close enough. Now he's got to try and just get the drive, get the slipstream. The biggest problem he's had here he comes now. Is he going to have another go into turn six? Rossi knows he's there. He's defended. Has he got a bit hot into turn six there? Now? That podium such a long time since he's been on that top three. If he stays on board, what a job the Italian's done as well. He's long gone in second place. Am I on the circuit? Or... It's in my eyes. Now he's got a problem. He has. He's Great got spot, smoke. Steve. Oh, look at this. Pramod Caddy can't believe it. They cannot believe it. Pecco Bagnaia, there's smoke filling. He stayed on yeah, into the last corner. Pavic Vignales has gone through, but he's gone wide again. Valentino Rossi comes through. There's how he can continue like this. And I'm worried for him as well because he clearly does not know what is going on. Perhaps seen as a problem. Is there a team communication to him? Has he looked down at the dash? This This is a high side. He knows. Oh, this is cruel in the extreme. This is what happened to Fabio Quattararo, wasn't it? He was running second in Jerez last year. We're having mechanicals. We're having high sides. Front end washouts. We've had everything. Well, this is in second. Maverick Vinal is in third. And Monster Energy Yamaha might be salvaging something remarkable. Nakagami's now. He can ride slowly with it. He's going to go and see if he can get a couple of points. Well, well he's, if he just finishes the race, he'll get to be denied the chance to fight for your first by the GP podium. Totally out of your control. So what about Davizioso? He's going to salvage sixth place. Now, Takanaka Gavi has got what? Fourth as well either. Valentino Rossi at the moment holds strong, holds firm, holds on to for the two uh, men who unfortunately have had mechanicals and gone out of this one. That's just cruel in the extreme. Dude, an absolutely phenomenal race. He didn't make a mistake. Did not make a single mistake. Here comes he was cruising in the Rossi. He had excellent drive out of turn five. He's putting everything into this. He's throwing the kitchen sink at Valentino Rossi. being the third best Yamaha after all the great race pace he showed all weekend. Time on his side to try and find out the GP podium. That day it was Yamaha. Rossi Lorenzo and Bradley Smith. Six, Maverick Vinales is so fast around these right-handers. So, yes, he's going to have another opportunity to get Valentino into the go. Track temperature in sector three, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Insane what we're watching. What a week it's been in Jerez. The stories. I mean, it's the top Maverick in his place. Oh, this is going to hurt. Look at that. In a race like yeah, this, Fabio's just in a world of seconds clear of Rossi and Vinales he is right now. Look at that. 38 nines for frightening speed, frightening consistency. Mar Marquez, when he does get back to full fit, Fabio Quattararo is on his way to a maximum 50 point haul so far. Away. We're in line for three Yamahas on the podium. Yeah, yeah. That First has time not for, yeah. happened for a fourteen time. Philippe League. It's all about the battle of the second place between Rossi and Vinyal as the two factory Yamaha podium battle. Pekka Bagnaia certainly was. He was in a safe second, just like Quattararo was one year ago when of Maverick Vinales, the LCR team, just begging Nakagami on. I think he's just going to run out of time and slower than the Yamahas ahead of him. I think Mir's his bigger problem at the moment. Pekka Bagnaia. 
Christian Gavarini there just says, sorry mate, really, really sorry, he rode awesome. That's what he can say. Here comes the slipstream though, he's this got time, him now, he's got him, he's surely got him, down into, he's not, still the doctor, hangs on <laughs> to second place. The doctor a demon on the brakes into turn six, how many the advantage in the braking zone? You know Maverick's going to lunge, Maverick wants that exactly. On board now with Maverick Vinales, number 12, as he looks to find a way through on Rossi, he's going to have enough. Comes now, looking for that inside line, can he get it? No, defence again from Valentino Rossi. So Maverick Vinales right now, Valentino Rossi is like one of those wide low trucks, isn't he? He just cannot get through. Of Valentino as it oh, is as brilliant. anything else, because this sort of defence oh, is not easy he's to pull off. To, Rossi's having to compare to Rossi. This is silencing the, some of the doubts from last week. Oh, oh that's a lovely attempt. And he's really going to try and pounce on Rossi on the braking zone into the Pedrosa corner. Can he do it this time? Nakagami fourth, Mir fifth, Dovi sixth, Thomas Bargaro seventh as Rossi's wide on X end. Goodness what me, the story through here. We're going live with After the Flag shortly after this. and we got. He's gone wide and he's lost second place. Maverick finally finds a way through as the front end gives way for Valentino. Left. Or will he just think, you know what, you can have that second place, Vinales. I'm going to be back on the podium. I'm not going to take any Grand Prix. Here's the battle raging for second. Quattararo is about seven, eight seconds clear. And straight away, he's been able to gap Valentino Rossi. And Rossi can't relax here because no. Takanaki, Takagami in sector three and sector four was brilliant. He took three tenths out of Rossi. We'll hold off Vinales for as long as he did because as soon as Vinales has passed him, he's gone. It's all telling his first MotoGP podium here. He's getting it loose, really attacking on the front end of that. And no one has been a match for him today. 25 grueling laps in the most... Holding up Honda on a brilliantly here. He's doing a Marquez all in. He's taken another three tenths out of Rossi already. On control for the whole of this Andalusian Grand Prix. Fabio Quattararo cruising to his second second for him. The force is with Fabio. Bragging right to Yamaha, belong to him. He's back on the podium for the first time since Austin. A good effort from Nakagami. That's his best drive result. And disappointing day for KTM in seventh. An outstanding job at the end there for Alex Marquez. Uh, in the man is about to go across the line. Alex Rins takes tenth place. He Battered was, Valentino oh, look, Rossi. Yeah. Look at him, 41 years old, and he's back on the podium. Wilco, give, give me your thoughts. Well, of course, that's what we wanted it, but uh, yeah, of course, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a shame he couldn't finish the race, uh, no idea, the engine stopped, so uh, let's see what's going on. An old rider like I am, I think Fabio uh, put a nail, uh, one more nail in. Uh, I agree, but uh, there are many races to come, and uh, you know, here in Jerez, he loves the track, it's his favourite track, and uh, we need to keep fighting. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, there's absolutely no doubt that the man that will be then blown away 